Hi, I'm Alan Smith. You know, the holidays are a festive time of the year. You can bring family and friends together and entertain in your home. So in today's show, we're gonna jump right in, look at some great ways to make your home more festive the natural way. Holly is one of those plants often associated with the holidays, but it's such an interesting family of plants. This is called Nellie R. Stevens, and you can see, look at all of the berries. We can thank our honeybees for that. This is an evergreen holly, the one we mostly associate with the holidays, but then this is the deciduous form. This is Ilex verticiliata, and these deciduous hollies can make stunning displays for the holidays, and I use them every year. As I mentioned, hollies are a big family, a fascinating family. Take these beautiful trees. This is actually the American holly, or a cultivar of, and this variety is called savanna. And you can see it's just loaded with all kinds of gorgeous berries. And just behind me, you'll see a holly hedge. This is needlepoint holly, and it certainly takes the knife, meaning that it can be shorn into a beautiful hedge. Now here's another species of holly I want to share with you. This is called Yopon holly. It's a native, and what's wonderful about it is the leaf actually contains caffeine. It's an edible leaf, and actually the Native Americans through the South use this as a drink. So we grow it here because the birds love it and also makes a great hedge. So the next time you think about hollies, remember they come from a big and interesting family. It's not surprising that carnations have become a Christmas time favorite. After the break, Jay shares his special connection with this flower. Well, it's that time of year again when we deck out Moss Mountain Farm with lots of Christmas cheer. And here to help me this year is my great friend, Jay Schwanke. Jay, welcome to the farm. Ellen, thanks for having me. I love coming to Moss Mountain and helping <laughs> you decorate. It's so much fun. Look what I have. Red carnations. <laughs> Nothing says Christmas like red carnations. I know how much you love these. Absolutely. And I think I can create a little bit of holiday magic with these. I can't wait. I'm Jay Schwanke, and people call me the flower guy. The carnation is experiencing a resurgence. When I was a kid, it was super popular, and again, people are falling in love with it all over again. So we're gonna make a topiary tree, a little centerpiece, and then we're gonna do a nest. I love a nest because there's great tradition that goes with it. We'll pretend that those carnations are eggs. The versatility of the carnation, it allows me to do different styles with it, and the uniformity is that we have the same flower and the same color. Carnations are super special to me. My grandfather was Carnation Joe Green, and he wore a red carnation every single day. He was a super creative guy, and he was always giving me ideas. Having a carnation in the house, it's special to me, and it makes the holiday special. So we'll take our carnations, and we're gonna bundle them, and that gives us that topiary form. Carnations have a little bit of a fluid stem so they can bend out, so we're gonna gather them up together, and as we gather them up together, we can almost make a ball-type shape. We're gonna insert a whole bunch of stems as just one big giant stem into the foam. Then we'll base around the bottom with some carnations and some pretty evergreen.
The great part about this is it's small. Sometimes we have so many people over for an event and we have lots of food on the table. So I call them breakaway centerpieces because they can break apart and we can use them in different places. So with that one, we used a little container, created a collar of foliage around the outside, and then dotted a few of those carnations, kind of overlapped them in the middle. And it gives us great color impact, but it's small and it's portable. I love a nest because there's great tradition that goes with it. There's legends that support it being beneficial for the year to come. So having a nest included in your Christmas decorations is a really cool thing. I fabricated the nest and I placed it on top of a collar of the greenery and then I used a couple carnations to symbolize the eggs that would be inside. I always bevel the edge just because it makes it easier to make something round. I think some people freak out sometimes when they start to use flower foam because they're kind of like, oh, am I going to do it right? But it's really easy. It allows you the ability to place a flower exactly where you want it to go. So we're going to tie a couple of those just like we did on the last one. Then. We're going to take our bind wire. So this is a craft wire that has wire on the inside of it. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to make it into a ball. Don't try and overthink this. This isn't hard. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to make that ball into a nest in the center of our bouquet. I'm forever picking up pine cones because I just love them and they come in so many different shapes and sizes. White pine or a long needled pine grows in almost every region in our country. So it's a really easy thing that we could go out and trim. Then you simply pick up a bunch of red carnations, bring them home. The thing is it lasts a long time, it smells great, it has great color. So it, it has all those attributes we look for for a flower to be a great performer so we can enjoy it for a season. If red isn't your deal, pink carnations or white carnations or blue ones, whatever you want, the carnations are so durable and they're so versatile that having them together just allows that to be the continuity. Now you won't want to miss making some cookies with my great aunt Jamie. That's coming up next. Aunt Jamie, I'm so excited that you agreed to be on the show. Thousands of people have enjoyed your cookies here at the farm. I think last week I made 38 dozen. <laughs> oh my gosh, that I was making been a them in my sleep. <laughs> I bet you were. Well, what's wonderful about the way you go about things is you're so methodical, and I think it's a recipe that anybody can follow. Do you mind walking yes, us through it? Yes, I'm happy to share. <laughs> The first thing is two sticks of butter. And those, that's just room temperature? 
room temperature, yep. it, it has to be softened. This summer I softened it outside, 20 minutes on the deck table. I and bet it was that's ready. all it took was 20 minutes. Okay, one cup of dark brown sugar. It can be yep. light brown. Yep. I, I really like the richness of the, it of the has dark a brown. Slightly different you want to add the white yeah. sugar, okay. granulated so the same sugar? Same amount of white granulated yes. sugar. Yes, one we go. cup. Okay. And now turn this on and let it cream. Anything that you do that has a high butter sugar content needs to cream thoroughly. If you're making a pie crust or whatever, we add one cup of canola. All right. Hand me that large brown egg oh, there. Oh yeah, from one of our girls. Came from your farm. Yeah. There we go. And this is one teaspoon of real vanilla. Mm-hmm, I can smell it. I'm gonna turn this off for just a second. Now. All right, yeah. Now I want you to explain this because I think this is very clever. This changed my attitude about making 38 dozen cookies a week. <laughs> uh, this is four ingredients, a half cup of coconut, a half cup of chopped pecans, a cup of oatmeal, oh, mm -hmm. and a, a cup of crushed cornflakes, all the stuff that makes them so crunchy. The whole cookie process goes much faster. Mm. Oh, I think it's ready now. I'm, okay. I'll turn it off. These have to chill in the refrigerator for about an hour so that it's easy to work with. There's one batch already done. Okay. I simply dip the fork into the water and, do a little cross and press them, sort of like we've always done with mm. the peanut butter Cook. cookies. When they are flatter, mm. they're crispier. So Aunt Jamie, how many cookies will this recipe we just did, how many will we make? It'll make eight dozen, eight, or right. 96. That'll feed a lot of hungry people. It will. And so how long in the oven, and at what temperature? It, at 350, um, it's about 18 minutes. Every batch is a winner. Good. I'm glad mm. you like them. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. After the break, we explore some of the many benefits of rosemary. So don't go away. There's a lot of talk these days about rosemary. It's an herb used in so many ways, for cooking, for medicine. For 2,000 years, it's been used as a stress reliever, a great herb for your skin, as well as a memory booster. It's an herb with a very distinct flavor and aroma, and I love using it in many things. But first, I wanna talk about how I grow rosemary. This is just rosemary officinalis, one of the common rosemaries. This rosemary has experienced temperatures as low as 14 degrees, and it continues to come back. People ask me, how do you grow this hedge of rosemary in our zone eight? If you wanna grow it, you want to grow it in the ground uh, in well-drained soil, and it needs full sun. If you're growing in a climate where it drops below, let's say 14 degrees, uh, you'll want to grow rosemary in containers and be able to pull it in inside so you give it some protection on those really cold nights or stretches of winter. You want to make sure it gets plenty of sunlight, but you want to cut down on the water if you bring rosemary in for it to survive from one season to the next. 
Because rosemary is such an ancient herb with so many traditions and that it's evergreen, it's the perfect herb for holiday decorating. So why don't I give you an idea that you can use in your own holiday festivities. After the break, we're setting the table for a Christmas feast. Jay, it looks like it's really coming together over here. Oh, it's going well. Holiday decorating and entertaining really ought to be simple. Exactly, and I like to make the arrangements easy too. Well, this is a simple buffet table, and what you've done here is you've created a, well, a series of different approaches you could take for a beautiful centerpiece, which none of them really take much time. Exactly, I love the little birds because there it's just fill in the dot. Yeah. Each one of those little holes, I just drop in a flower and it's simple and it's done. Yeah, it takes minutes. Now, this one is really easy too. I found the compote, I liked it, and so I just placed a glass down inside here. Sure. And then took three hydrangeas. Now those hydrangeas can be top heavy, so they could pop out, but I bound them together with bind wire and then drop them down. Yeah. So that binding helps hold them in place Indeed. and keep them And together. you just use a simple bowl here. Absolutely. Yeah. So, shop in the house. Yeah. I went after your soup tureen. <laughs> I thought I love that was that great. Tureen. Yeah, it looks great with the cyclamen in it. And so, I wanted to put them down inside. Now, they come in little pots like this. Of course. Right. And so, I couldn't quite get three in there, so I bumped them out of their pot and dropped them into a plastic bag. Oh yeah, that's a great So there's great a plastic trick. bag yeah. inside there, and then we can just go through and accent with our succulents that I put on a stick. Beautiful, beautiful. And then what's simpler than a bowl of fruit? Exactly, so a bag of apples into that reticulated bowl, we're ready to go. And you can put the emphasis where it needs to be, spending time with your friends and loved ones rather than worrying about this. Exactly, it can be simple, easy, and fun. Want to learn more? Visit pallensmith.com for delicious recipes, garden tips, blog posts, and our online store. Tis the season for decorating the tree, hanging those lights, decking the halls in general, but most importantly, spending time with family and loved ones. I hope today's show has inspired you to get in the holiday spirit. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith. Mm, so good. <laughs> <laughs>